Indeed. Um, I feel actually that the film that you saw about NCDA is almost an introduction to the Bromley by Bow Centre in the sense that um, we're very much kindred spirits and if you think about all of what Penny's just shown you about the sort of things that NCDA does, they're fairly similar to what the Bromley by Bow Centre does. So um, I'll talk to you a little bit about an evaluation project that we ran at the Bromley by Bow Centre. But first of all, for those of you who don't know where the Bromley by Bow Centre is, um, the donut-shaped um, item in the middle should give you a clue. Um, it's a stone's throw away from um, the Olympic Park, and um, interestingly, um, like many um, instances actually about London, um, the contradictions of um, wealth and poverty sitting side by side are hugely apparent within the borough of Tower Hamlets and, and the bromley by Bow area. Um, this um, gentleman, Charles Truth, um, for those of you who know, um, is the person who um, in the 19th century created the poverty maps of London and shaded the streets, um, starting, um, interestingly, the, the main streets were shaded red and that was where the wealthy lived and as you went further and further into the neighbourhoods the colour got darker and darker until you got to the inky uh, bluey black streets which were called the indigent um, semi-criminal classes and um, Bromley by Bow um, was an area of deprivation then and um, despite everything or perhaps even because of everything um, it still is today. Um, interestingly I saw a slideshow of, of, of London um, that John Hills um, from the LSE put up showing the areas of poverty and deprivation in London under Charles Booth's poverty maps and showing them today and they're fairly identical across London. That drew um, an incredible <coughs> grasp actually from the audience who was speaking to the voluntary sector in London um, and of course we all um, felt uh, quite mortified that um, all of our best efforts over the last few decades have not managed to change any of that. What he pointed out was, of course, that in many cities around the world, um, things haven't stayed the same, they've got considerably worse. So potentially um, part of the effect of what we're doing is at least holding the line. Um, so this is Bromley by Bow, um, and um, so an area of chronic um, poverty, child poverty, the, uh, the highest level of child poverty in the UK until recently, I think we're now the third highest, um, so we're slipping in our rankings there a little bit. Um, chronic underachievement, um, huge levels of overcrowding, and of course, um, e equally people now being hit by the bedroom tax as well for, for different reasons. Very high unemployment, significantly above London averages, um, lots of things going on in the streets at night, um, huge amounts of indebtedness and people um, taking up um, loans, informal loan sharks or, or payday loans, um, and all these sort of issues around um, domestic violence and, 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 and racism. So that is the Bromley by Bow area, um, but this is also the Bromley by Bow area. This is the Bromley by Bow centre itself. Um, something of an oasis nestling amongst um, some very, very deprived housing estates um, within, within the Bromley by Bow area. Um, what you see there is a community centre and a health centre, so we were dissatisfied with the levels of, or the provision for, of health in the area, so we took out a mortgage and built a GP practice, one of the only GP practices in Britain that's owned by the patients and not by the GPs. Um, we then set about um, persuading the council to give us a three acre park that the practice um, overlooked, um, which was sort of full of concrete and dog, glass, uh, dog poo and broken glass. And we turned that into one of the most beautiful landscape little pocket parks in the area um, and developed a social enterprise that now um, does uh, landscape redesign and development and trades at about £750,000 a year, uh, employing local people to similarly renovate local spaces. Um, so the Bromley by Bow Centre, this is the Bromley by Bow Centre, this is one of our disability groups within, within the centre. Um, this was last week, we um, were part of an Olympic programme to get uh, disabled people onto the Olympic Park engaging with sport. We have some uh, ambassadors doing that and we held a launch there um, last week. Um, and uh, so that's, that's something that happened in our park. We also held our adult learner celebration last week, so we have up to 400 or 500 some years um, adult studying with us at the centre, so that was part of the adult learner celebration. So um, the picture is no, by no means bleak. That's the Bromley by Bow Centre in some figures. Um, employs 150 people, delivers about two and a half million pounds worth of services every year um, to about two and a half thousand people, um, not just actually in the Bromley by Bow neighbourhood, but also across Tower Hamlets as well. Um, those are sort of programmes that we do, not dissimilar to NCDA. Um, we also have a social enterprise startup program that's set up 41 social businesses in the last seven years that now trade 
about four million pounds annual turnover and employ 250 local people. GP practice as well, um, um, and it's a number of linked GP practices by the same GP practice. We also have a number of partners on site as well. So we, we grew out of a church on the corner and that's still there. Um, we have a cafe run by Food Cycle who use food that's about to be thrown away. And that cafe is now put through 150 volunteers in the last 12 months who've learned the trade of running a cafe, taking food that would have been thrown away by supermarkets and turning it into beautiful meals that are eaten by hundreds of people every day who come to the cafe. Um, so it's very much a community hub. It's the sort of thing you might find in a, in a, church, in a, in a, in a, in a country village, really, um, nestling in the middle of, of, of East London. We have a nursery on site as well, run by Bow Childcare, a housing office for the local social landlord. Um, so it's a, it's a really very, very interesting place. So um, I think I'm an interesting person to speak about evaluation. I'm, I'm quite sceptical about evaluation myself, and I'm, I think I'm one of these sort of people who, who really enjoys going out there doing it rather than um, uh, counting the numbers. Um, so I took some persuading to get involved with the evaluation project. Um, of course one can see the logic of why we want to evaluate. We want to persuade our um, lords and paymasters, as it were, as to why we're worth funding. Um, and of course, as, um, as statutory provision declines and the, the third sector is taking up some of the reins, albeit with diminished funding itself, um, the, the case for the third sector can therefore be made through evaluation. Um, I think there is always an issue around proportionality um, and you know, the, the, the amount of time and effort one can spend in evaluation, the amount of time one spends on delivery. Um, and Organisations like the Bromley by Bow Centre, to be fair, are full of people who love delivering services and really hate doing evaluation. So um, it's, sort of, it's an interesting sort of thing to do there. But I think also um, there's a huge amount of benefit from doing evaluation for the organisation itself. And I, taking us through this three year journey, um, we, we didn't have the kind of resources that NCDA had. We had a, a person doing one and a half days a week without all the um, academic backup that, that the university here has given. Um, I think we were very much finding our way through that, but there were huge, huge gains to the organisation. I think one of the real gains, actually, for, for an organisation is that um, delivering services is fairly relentless and remorseless, actually, for the staff doing it. And I think it is really, really important for people to step back a little bit from what they're doing, um, to, to really examine what they're doing, to, in many sense, talk to the, people, the clients that they're working with, local people, um, and, and spend some time actually reflecting with them about what they're doing and what, what local needs are. So the evaluation project for us was a really interesting opportunity to do an institutional stock take. It uh, led to us revisiting our values and our mission and our vision and all those sorts of things that organisations do periodically. Um, and I think that was a really, really interesting thing to do and, and really started, to, I think, to make us think a little bit differently about our role within the community. Historically, growing out of a church, an independent charity, um, we were able, in a sense, to choose what we did a little bit freely. Um, becoming the deliverer of huge volumes of services within a local community um, gave us a very, very key role that, within that uh, community. And I think it started to make us think differently about that principal role that we have within that community. Um, and so we went through a whole series of things, um, sorting out data, for instance, 50, up to 50 funded projects every year, 50 sets of data, trying to pull all that together was a, a very, very interesting thing to do. Getting program managers to think beyond the, beyond the 10 projects, funded projects that they deliver about creating program outcomes, for example, um, and creating program indicators was very, very interesting. It was a hugely energizing process. But I think coming on to the challenges, um, I think for community anchor organizations, um, looking at the diminishment of the state, looking at the fact that you know, we've got a, a flourishing time bank. So talking about intergenerational volunteering, we've got 250 people now busily time banking at the Bromley by Bow Centre, and I'm being told I'm out of time. Um, I think it's really interesting. So I think the case that the community anchor organisations now need to make for their role, given the context, is a hugely exciting opportunity to engage with evaluation. And I don't think we should look completely at the diminishment of funding um, as, as, as something that's totally to, to, to um, be abhorred. It also gives us an opportunity to recreate what is community and what is our role within that community.